Jay, come on, talk to us some more. Well, may I say to you that today there's a great deal of churchianity that's bland and bloodless. Churchianity? Churchianity? Jay, you got to explain this to us. Tasteless and colorless. It's devoid of the warmth and feeling. There's no personal relationship with Christ that is meaningful and productive. It's like that liberal, he said it made him sick to hear people talk of a personal relationship with Christ. Well, I'd sure make him sick if he listened to this program because that's the thing you have to have, my friend, is a personal relationship with Christ and your ritual and your liturgy is not worth a snap of your fingers. Woo! You need to know the Lord Jesus Christ. The church, the true church, knows the Lord Jesus Christ. Your ritual is nothing and worth nothing if you know not Christ. If you do not abide truly in him. Remember in the scripture it said, those that worship me, worship me in spirit and in truth. Those are the true worshipers. Those are the ones that remain in Christ. Jay, come on, talk to us some more. Unless it's got a life that is related to Jesus Christ. Now, may I move on? If there's no deep yearning for a life that's well-pleasing to him, no real study of his word, no stimulating desire to know his word, no real study of the word, not excited about the Bible and the word of God. Church membership for a great many people today in certain churches, it's just like a young man falling in love with a furnished apartment and marrying an electric stove and a refrigerator and a vacuum cleaner and a garbage disposal and a wet mop. That's just about what it means. I heard of a maiden lady years ago who was asked why she had never gotten married. And she gave this very interesting answer. She says, well, I have a stove that smokes. I have a dog that growls around the house. And I have a parrot that cusses. And a lazy cat that lies around all day loafing and then is out half of the night. Says, why do I need a husband? May I say to you, that's the kind of a relationship that a great many folk have to God and to Christ today. Woo! Those are not kind words, and this is probably cutting you deep. But what J. Vernon is talking about is exactly what is happening within America. It's happened in England. It's happening in America. I was riding with a, a relative of mine and they were sharing with me all their religious things that they were meeting up to. And when I went to say, well, none of that is, has anything to do with the Lord, completely cut me off. People would rather today, we would rather today be entertained to have our religious duties and do our religious right things that we think is right. But to really, truly, and honestly know the Lord Jesus Christ is far from us. Come on, Jay. Talk to us. And yet they have a ritual in which they jump up and down and run all around. But it's meaningless. Let's stop playing church today and start loving Christ and... Wait, wait, what did you say, Jay? I just want to repeat that. Christ today, and yet they have a ritual in which they jump up and down and run all around, but it's meaningless. Let's stop playing church today and start loving Christ and living for Him. That's, that's what we need to do. We need to stop playing games and live for Christ. Come on, Jay. I want to share with you right now two of the most remarkable letters that I've had in many a day. Now, when he reads these two letters, I want you guys to really listen in. Listen in to what is said. And think about, think about your walk with Christ. 
I'm going to think about mine. You think about yours when you hear these two letters. The first one comes from a little town in Tennessee, and I'm not going to identify it because I do not want to identify these people. They've written wonderful letters. Listen to this. I discovered your program out of Memphis only about six months ago, just when I needed it most. Isn't that just like our lovely Lord? I am a born-again Christian, only two years old. That's really something for a 55-year-old grandmother to have to admit. My husband is a retired, regular army dentist, heart patient. We moved 33 times in 26 years before retiring on this little farm here in the boondocks. We played church. I even taught a women's Sunday school class, and my husband was a deacon. I can't speak for him, but all I had was head knowledge and very little heart knowledge. And a young minister in the church where we have gone for 14 years is so liberal, he thinks the belief in the virgin birth unnecessary and sees no conflict between transcendental meditation and Christianity. We stuck it out for a year and then left the church. I would be less than honest to say I don't miss a church home since I've had church homes like that. Now, will you listen to the other letter? It comes from Southern California, and I'll not identify the place. And this is a very remarkable letter. Well, you'll hear it carefully. I am a wife and mother under 30, and I've been a Christian since I was three and a half. I've often thought of writing, but didn't think I had anything meaningful to say. Well, I've changed my mind. Several years ago, I knew a lady quite well who was constantly pushing your program at me. This lady was a terrible housekeeper, had an unhappy husband and marriage, and five unruly children. But she listened to her Christian programs from morning till night. Naturally, I associated her fanaticism with you and would not listen. During the past three years, however, I've been listening to you weekdays and sometimes on Sunday before church. And I found you to have a rare gift and so on. I'm certainly glad you dedicated your work to Christ and so on. Now, I'm dropped down. I love the study of the Word. I get so much from your theology and your knowledge of the Scriptures. I wish that I could find a pastor locally who preached as well. And by the way, there are several men in her area, and we're going to let her know about them, that do lots better than I do, and I can assure you that they're young men who are expositors. Now, will you listen? Our time is so short, and I'm glad you're filling each minute with the vital news of God. I wish I could have seen past that latest disorderly life a long time ago. God bless you in your work, thou good and faithful servant. Up. Now, did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? Think about your walk with Christ. How many of us are listening to all these great, great, great Bible expositors? We can quote the scriptures, but if an unbeliever or an unregenerate person was to walk by us and describe if we were Christian or not, would they be able to say we were? 